All right, hi there. This is Dr. Matthew J. Trom. The purpose of this video is to show you the multi-step process that one would go through to create a custom mold uh, to produce edible chocolate using a vacuum thermoform machine. Uh, the machine that I'm going to demonstrate to you here is an AW Pro dental vacuum forming machine. Uh, it's got a thousand watt heater uh, and it's available from uh, Amazon.com for uh, between $90 and about $140 depending on uh, when you buy it and from whom you buy it. Um, I am going to create uh, just a, a simple mold using this letter uh, T. This T, by the way, comes from a set of plastic letters. So I'll just show you here. Here's the set of plastic letters. Um, this is available from Walmart. Uh, I purchased it for about $4. Uh, and I am going to be using uh, Food Safe PETG clear thermoform plastic, uh, which we can see a, a little piece of it here. Um, this is available in 10 packs from Amazon uh, for about $16. Um, so not too expensive a proposition uh, to, to attempt to do this. Um, this uh, 10 pack, by the way, um, comes in sheets of 12 inches by 12 inches. And what I've done is cut one 12 by 12 inch sheet into four six by six inch sheets. Um, the working area here is roughly five inches by five inches. So a six by six sheet uh, is just small enough to fit uh, within the vise. Um, so this uh, seems to work out pretty well from a size perspective. Um, this PETG material is food safe um, and it comes um, with a lining that we'll have to remove. So let me find a corner here. Find a corner. There we go. So I'm going to remove the clear lining from one side and then there's an opaque lining on the other side which I will attempt to remove here. There we go. Get under a corner and attempt to remove that. Okay, <clears throat> so now I've got clean, food safe, clear PETG plastic. This, by the way, is uh, 0 0.020 uh, inches thick, so it's uh, one of the thinner materials that you would get. <coughs> I'm going to now take this material and I'm going to put it into the vise. I'm going to slide it in there, making sure that it's supported equally on both sides and that the vise can actually close around it. There we go. Now we've got the vise closed. Okay, um, next thing I'm going to do uh, is use this red lever here back in the corner to just make sure that when I bring the thermoform plastic down, it's actually centered uh, over the vacuum component, which it is. The first time I did this video, um, I made that mistake. I brought it down and it crashed instead of fitting on perfectly. So there we go. Um, and then I'm going to take my little plastic letter T and I'm going to just stick it right here. Note. Um, in the vacuum space, there's a number of perforations. Those are the tiny little holes that you see there. Um, and those holes allow vacuum to be pulled on the thermoform plastic um, so that the plastic can adhere as closely as possible um, to the letter T um, once I've heated the plastic up. Uh, okay, so the plastic is heated um, using a heater that can be swung into place and then swung out of place uh, for safety purposes. There's a little uh, plastic knob here because this gets quite hot to the touch and there is a, a little sticker to indicate um, that there's a, a issue with the temperature, uh, caution high temperature, so not to touch this part once it's activated. Um, so I think uh, now we are ready to start. I've got my trusty stopwatch here, my lab watch. Uh, so I'm gonna set that to zero. I'm going to swing the heater into place. Um, the um, uh, tray here, the um, vise, has three height settings. So I'm going to set it up to the, whoops, that's the lowest setting. That's the middle setting. That's the highest setting. So I'm going to set it up to the highest setting. And <clears throat> I'm going to turn on the heater, which <clears throat> is this switch right down here. So I'm going to turn on the heater. And I'm going to hit the start button. There we go. Uh, now I've done this a couple of times 
And just through trial and error, uh, I've learned that you have to heat this material for about two minutes. Um, if you <clears throat> underdo it, underheat it, um, the form, uh, the, the plastic doesn't form very well, doesn't make tight corners uh, over the original. Um, and well, if you overdo it, the material droops so much and becomes almost liquidy um, that when you actually bring it down over uh, the letter T, um, it... Uh, well, it becomes so thin that, that it, it doesn't actually work. It essentially breaks as you pull it down over the T. Um, so <clears throat> two minutes seems to be the magic number. Um, and if you look on the internet, look for other sources, you find that um, you should see a droop in the plastic uh, of about a, a quarter inch is sort of the rule of thumb. Um, and as we're sitting here, as this is heating up, um, you can actually begin to see, you probably can't see it there in the video because the heater is in the way, but you can begin to see the material at the center begin to droop, and then you can see that droop propagate outwards towards the edges of the material. Um, I want to be careful not to overdo it here, overheat it. Um, already made that mistake and came up with um, something that looks like this. Right, so you can see the material got uh, too hot and uh, folded over itself because it had drooped far too low uh, for it to be nicely, cleanly pulled using the vacuum uh, over the material. So that's a, an example of what not to do. All right, so we're about a minute and 45 seconds here, uh, and I can actually see the propagation of the droop propagate outwards. So uh, I'm pretty quickly uh, I'm going to turn off my timer. Uh, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. Two minutes. Okay, so I'm going to turn the heater off. I'm going to slide the heater out of the way. You can see the plastic drooping there. I'm going to turn on the vacuum. It's going to get very loud. I'm going to bring this down. Okay, that's pretty good. I pulled vacuum there for uh, about a minute, so we don't need this anymore. Um, okay, now I'm gonna lift this guy back up and we'll see how we did. Pull this guy out. Okay, so here's uh, my letter T, which is formed uh, into the thermoplastic. Uh, you can see it didn't quite adhere in the corners of the T. I've done better versions of this uh, where I heated it for just a little bit longer. Uh, so maybe 2 minutes and 15 seconds would have been better. Uh, but heating for 2 minutes and 30 seconds yields um, <laughs> this result, which I showed you before, where the plastic was so droopy uh, that it folded over itself. Um, so the final step here is to push the T out. So we're going to just pop it right out. And we're left with, um, here we go, a nice uh, T-shaped piece of thermoform plastic, food safe, uh, that I can then propagate into the next step, uh, which is filling up with uh, liquefied chocolate to produce my treat. So stand by and I'll show you the next couple of steps to get to the piece of chocolate in the shape of the letter T. Okay, so here we just use some scissors to cut the mold uh, to a smaller size, like this. 
so that it can sit inside a Tupperware and be put in the refrigerator to cool down once the chocolate is in place. Okay, so here we've got a double boiler set up with water in the bottom pan and Nestle Toll House chocolate chips in the top pan. So we're melting the chocolate to prepare it for the mold. Okay, the double boiler has done its job. Here is the melted chocolate chips ready to go uh, into the mold, which is standing by here right next to the stove. Okay, here comes the chocolate. Getting pushed in its molten form. into the mold. It's moved out with a spatula so that it's pressed all the way into that shape and makes a nice even flat surface. All right, here is the chocolate filled mold going into the freezer. So I'm just going to sit it right there on top of the ice tray to cool down and solidify. And we will pull it out uh, in a few minutes and see how we did. Okay, so elapsed time of about 45 minutes. Here we are back in the freezer. Here is the oh. Oh, okay. Let me know. Yep. Chocolate tea. Nicely solidified in the freezer and frozen. So we're gonna <clears throat> Push it gently out of the mold, attempting not to break it. And that's the end result. It's a molded letter T. Success. And now to prove that it's actually edible, here is my molded chocolate tea, and I'm going to eat it. Good. Nice and cold. Tastes like chocolate chips, only better because it's in the shape of a tea and it's been through a manufacturing process. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. Hopefully, you found it informative, and we will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.